Hello and welcome. In today's tutorial, I will explain static cast and dynamic cast. So let's take an example of a static cast. Uh, we have uh, a base class. In the base class, we have uh, a function, nothing but a function and a constructor. And uh, we have two derived classes of this same base class: derived one class and uh, derived two class. Derived one class is uh, having one integer value and uh, there is a function which displays the value and this value is initialized when the constructor is invoked S the similar kind of class we have uh, derived to class we have derived to value and uh, it will be calling a derived to function this derived to function will display derived to value and this value is initialized in the derived to class constructor in the main function we are creating an instance of derived one class the point to be noted is that uh, the we have a base class pointer and we are creating an instance of derived one class means we are instantiating derived one class uh, so if we want to call the function of uh, derived one class we cannot call the function through pointer to a base class it will not list the function in whatever is in the derived one class it will just show the function what uh, is uh, listed what we have given in the base class so this function is a base class function it will not show derived one function because we have uh, not casted it if we uh, if we cast it back to derived one class pointer then we will be able to see all the functions listed in the derived one class so we know that the instantiate instantiation of this pointer to base is uh, derived one class so we can cast it to derived one class pointer okay so the way uh, if we want to do like this it will be totally wrong it will give a compilation error the compiler will say that uh, what you are doing I am not sure that you are doing it correct so to assure the compiler that uh, this pointer to base is uh, a type of derived one class we uh, introduce static cast so this is the format of a static cast now the compiler will tell ok you are doing it correct uh, the compiler will trust you and it will just compile the pointer to base to the derived one class pointer so the same address whatever is allocated here this will be casted back to derived one class pointer and uh, the same address you will be seeing it is reflected here and now we can call the function in the derived class so you will see a list of the functions derived one function even the function in the base class because we uh, because derived one class is a <coughs> is a derived class of the base class so we can call any fu any public functions of the base class also so let's call the derived one function and uh, let's see what happens let's compile it okay now let's run the program and see what is exactly happening now this is a pointer to a base and uh, we are going to create one derived class instance so once this line is executed the very first thing will be called as the base class constructor so let's keep a breakpoint here before that uh, derived one value will be uh, instantiated it will come here it will instantiate this value and then it will call the base class constructor after that it will again come back to the derived class and the constructor of derived one will be invoked the next thing what we are going to do we are going to static cast this pointer to base to derived one class pointer so let's note the address is c4858 so this c4858 will be casted back into derived class pointer and the address what we will be getting the same address we will be getting in DP so let's say F10 and execute this line so as you can see the same address will be reflected here 
and uh, derived one value you will be getting if uh, you explore this now uh, my job is to call the derived one function let's go inside this what is happening it will just uh, print on the console that what is a derived one value and uh, let's see the output the first thing base class constructor is called then derived one constructor is called and uh, you will be able to see that derived one value so in this way you can cast you can use a static casting and you can uh, uh, invoke any function of uh, the derived class or the type you have casted now let's uh, uh, make it little bit uh, typical now uh, we know that uh, the point the ptr base is uh, instantiated with derived one class and uh, if we uh, if we uh, cast it back to derived one class pointer the pointer to base will be casted back to derived one class uh, we know that we are doing it correct so let's say we want to cast it to derived two class pointer which is not correct but uh, the com we are uh, assuring the compiler that what we are doing we know what we are doing it is correct so the compiler will tell okay you can cast it back and uh, you can call the function of derive2 so let's see what happens here we will uh, get some trouble we we will get some different value let's see uh, when we run this we have instantiated the derive class derived one class so it will not come here Okay, so the right one class it will be instantiated, then it will go to base class, and uh, again it will call the right one class constructor, not the right two class constructor, and uh, it will. Now we are telling the compiler to cast back the PTR base to derived two class type. It will not do any type checking. It will just cast the same address to derive to class pointer and uh, we will be getting the same address it is 4858 so the same address 4858 will be there now when we call derive to function let's go inside this we are going to print derive to value but derive to value let's see what it prints it will print derived two values five because we have instantiated uh, derived one class. So in derived one class, the value what we are setting, the first integer value what we are setting is five, and in derived two class we were supposed to get seven because we invoked the function of derived two. But we are getting uh, the value as five. Why we are getting like that? because uh, we have inst uh, we have co instantiated a derived right one class and uh, <coughs> the same address uh, of the integer value we are going to locate it through uh, this uh, derived two value so that's that is the reason uh, this is also pointing to the same address so the value what is reflected in the derived two value is uh, 5 it should be 7 so this is the problem that uh, we are facing we are getting an incorrect value so that's why we should uh, know what kind of uh, what kind of uh, class we are going to cast it into because uh, here we are instantiating a derived one class and we are casting it into derived two class so this is the problem we are facing now in this case uh, if we don't know what type it is so we can use uh, uh, dynamic cast so dynamic cast uh, will do type checking and uh, it will return a null pointer instead of returning the same address so we can uh, do a null check and uh, better than calling this function we will uh, we will not call this function we will put it in inside a null pointer check and uh, at least we will not get a wrong value like this so let's do dynamic casting So now we are uh, dynamic casting uh, derived one class uh, instantiation of base pointer to 
derive to class pointer now uh, let's see what we will get the result now it is throwing an error it says the operand of a runtime must have a polymorphic class type so dynamic cast works on the RTTI that is the runtime type identification it makes use of the virtual table so it says in the base class we must have a virtual function so let's uh, make this as a virtual function and uh, it will compile now let's uh, build it and run the program now we got some address so this address is uh, it was supposed to be uh, casted back to the derived to class when we were doing a static casting but let's see what is happening when uh, we do dynamic cast we are not getting any uh, any value we are just getting a null pointer so because type checking is performed on runtime so this is called runtime type identification the compiler says that uh, the instantiation of base class is not a kind of uh, derived to class pointer so we will just return a null pointer and if we execute this uh, function if we execute this line the program will crash it will say unhandled exception and the program crashed we can just break this and see where it crashed through the call stack so this is the way how we can explore where our program crashed it will say here the program crashed and why it crashed let's go back it will say it's a null pointer so to avoid this kind of situation we uh, do a null pointer check when we are doing uh, dynamic casting so if null pointer is not equal to db we will execute this otherwise we will return zero so in this case my program won't crash so base class and drive class constructor was called and uh, while this was null pointer this line was not executed and my program did not crash now let's do it proper let's uh, cast it back to derived one class pointer itself and uh, let's see what happens and we will call the derived one function now again the same flow will happen and uh, now the compiler will cast it back to the same address it will give the same address in the DP now this is 314858 we will be getting 314858 and uh, we will get a proper value that is 5 so if it is a not, nu not a null pointer we are calling drive one function and it will just print the value so drive one value is 5 similarly let's uh, let's create an instance of derive two function derive two class sorry and cast it back to derive two class and now the value what we will get will be seven so derive two constructor was invoked after base class constructor was invoked so this is the basic uh, format of the static cast and dynamic cast Hope you learned it. If uh, you need further improvements, please leave comments. And uh, yeah, one more thing uh, we missed out. We should delete this pointer. Don't leave a pointer like this, otherwise, you will get a memory leak. So, if uh, null pointer is not equal to dp. Or we can do it inside that block only because we know that is the last uh, function we are calling so after calling this uh, function we can just delete it DP and uh, we can set it to null pointer again 
but uh, if we do these two lines outside the block suppose if it is a null pointer it will try to delete it again so that will not be proper so let's have a null check and again if it is not a null pointer after doing my work let's delete this pointer and uh, set it back to null pointer let's see how it is deleting <coughs> Now <coughs> we call the derived one function, derived two function. We have some value here. We will delete. Before that, uh, we will see the values. We can be able to explore it, and we can be able to see whatever is listed inside this. After deleting this, it will hold the address, but uh, it cannot evaluate all the expressions. You can see, and it will. Uh, put some junk value because uh, we have already deleted this pointer now let's assign it to null pointer and uh, that's it my memory will be freed and this pointer will not become a dangling pointer and we'll get uh, the same kind of output thanks thanks for watching please leave comments